Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. working on your behalf. We have got some exciting things. In fact, I don't even really know how to explain it. The men's event that is coming up August 20th has sort of kind of like morphed. That's the only way I just can describe it. We have got a band and everybody's invited and um, it's produced by the men of valor and there's going to be a pay gross and there's going to be really cool cars and the youth is going to do band and I don't even know what to say other than you have to be there. It is going to be a lot of fun and we are going to invite the entire neighborhood. So I mean it's just a, a, a really wow experience. Probably one of the biggest events we've had since COVID. So we just want you all to mark your calendars for August 20th and then the following Sunday, that next day, August 21st, we are going to have water baptisms. And if you've given your heart to Jesus, but you have not followed him in water baptism, this is your opportunity. Our ushers have clipboards, and they're going to pass them through the congregation. Sign up if you've never been water baptized, because this is going to be an exciting event, especially for your personal walk in Jesus. Well, our youth are on fire. 
going all kinds of places. You're just going to have to check the website right now. They are singing and praising God, and we are so grateful for what's happening in our youth um, at Glad Tidings. It's just growing, and it's an amazing thing. So I want to just encourage everyone, if you know a youth, encourage them to come. Well, how many people here love Jesus with all their heart? Raise your hand. And how many people know that you should be somewhere else but the grace of God? Raise your other hand. Okay, we are ready for worship.
sing it again, Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. Jesus, I love you, I love you, I love you. Just lift your hands with me. Open your heart. Come on, let's push. Come on, team. Come on. Here we go. Let's push into him. Jesus, I love you. I love you. I love you. And my heart will follow holy after you. Sing a new song to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Release, release healing tonight. Release deliverance tonight. I thank you for a spirit of revelation. Hallelujah. Brand new assurance in the hearts of your people. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. It is so good to see you tonight. Hallelujah. How many came tonight and you know you're good looking? Let me see your hands right now. You know you're... Look at somebody and say, what you be looking at? Come on, tell them that right now. What you be looking at? Hallelujah. I am wonderfully made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's wonderful to be here tonight. Often I have a, a word that you can pick up. You get insights. Maybe get encouraged, strengthen, see the picture better. But tonight I'm bringing a word for you, for you, not for somebody else, not for those tuning in around the world. It's a word for you tonight. Hallelujah. And I want you to open your heart and have your calendar open. I want you to cancel every problem, every distraction. And I do not want you to miss tonight because God has an appointment with you. You better hear it. He has an appointment. He's a God that has rhythm and he keeps his appointments. But he's had a lot of no-shows. If you go to a place, it's a high-end restaurant, high-end restaurant. And I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but Wendy's is not. <laughs> All right, it's not. Burger King is not. Taco time shouldn't be open. But high-end restaurants, if a man said to you, baby, baby, I'm taking you to somewhere special tonight, what they'll do is they'll take his credit card and there will be a $250 deposit. Now, you don't have to eat all of that, but how many girls, if a man's paying for it, you're going to eat more than that? Let me see your hands right now. You're going to take advantage. You have no interest in them, but you're going to eat. No interest whatsoever. And if you're a no-show, hear it, they'll take your money. Look at me and say, there's certain things that are non-refundable. It's true. They're just non-refundable. And there's certain times, if you're a no-show with God, you're going to lose it all. I'm going to say, look at somebody and say, this isn't for you, this is for me. Come, Clear your calendar. Just say to yourself, to hate my ex-husband isn't worth it. Say it right now. Come on, everybody. To hate him. Stop taking darts and throwing it at his picture. Help me somebody tonight. Hallelujah. Because that hatred will have you miss God. Bitterness will have you miss God. If you're, if, if you're just cruising too much, oh, all you religious people, I need some young people to go, we know what he's talking about. You're just cruising too much. You're just going to too many clubs and saying, baby, baby, I feel something between us. But you felt something the other night and the other night and the other night. Hallelujah. You say to every girl you meet, your sweetness is my absolute weakness. <laughs> How many know the pastor can give you some lines that will maybe catch a fish? <laughs> Hallelujah. Most of you, you throw your line too deep and you get a bottom fish. We'll talk about that this time. Hallelujah. But listen to me. Listen to me. God has an appointment with you. 
And how many want to make sure you don't miss your appointment? A missing of an appointment can cost you 10 years in the desert. Yeah. Say, say, look at someone and say, this might not be for you, but it is for me. Hallelujah. I need this word tonight. I'm going to just say it. Man, you can miss your wife. Girl, you can miss your, your I almost said your wife. Man, I'm getting mixed, mixed up in my head, all right? You can miss your divine appointment with the person God has for you. Ooh. Ooh. Now, I'm sure Lee had a good heart, but say it with me, no thanks. You got to know the Bible when I tell you these things. Hallelujah. God has an appointment. Glad Tidings did not have another couple of years just kind of paddling away. It was a now moment. We had to capitalize it right now. Some of you don't understand this. I know you're in pain. I know you're frustrated. I know you're hurt. I know things aren't going your way. Don't give up. Don't lose your faith because you're gonna have an appointment with God and all your pain, all your hurt, all your disappointments, I wanna let you know they won't matter because the blessing of the Lord will be greater than any pain you've ever had. It won't matter anymore. One girl broke my heart. I was really hurt. I was really down for about a day and a half. But I saw her 10 years later. I wanna let you know Jesus is real. <laughs> I want to say that to somebody right now. Jesus is real. What I thought I wanted, what I demanded of God that he didn't give me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, help me, somebody. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Quit being so lonely that you marry someone like your mom. Help me, somebody in this place. Don't let your loneliness, don't let your hurt, don't feel like God doesn't answer your prayer, determine where you're going, because God has a divine appointment for every person here. Don't you miss your appointment. I'm gonna say it again, do not miss your appointment. Guy came to the wedding to marry the love of his life and he was so excited about it. I was at the church, he came in and said, I'm, I'm here a couple hours early, Pastor, you know I'm getting married today. Huh? So I'm getting married today. To who? Well, it's today. I said, dude, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you girls that have second thoughts about him? You can't even get the day right. All right, hear the word of the Lord. Usher's going to hand you out an envelope. Usher's hand everybody an envelope. And then we'll do a e transfer for those online, or you can send it to. Glad Tidings Church, 3456 Fraser Street, or drop it off at the church mailbox. But I want to declare this to you. Is there anybody here that believes that God has more money for you than what you have? Amen. Now, I, I, I want to give you this. You, you got to be a little theological with me and use your brains. And some people, I just love Jesus. I don't like theology. Theology tells you who Jesus is. Are you crazy? Girls, you can't just say you're in love with God and blink your eyes. You got to know who he is. <laughs> Egypt was a place of slavery for 400 years. And the people of God deserve to be there because they worship false gods. And so for 400 years, and I, I, the Egyptians are so smart. They worked you so hard that you had no strength to run away. They underfed you. Now, nobody here knows what I'm talking about, but explain it another time, all right? And so they were exhausted at night, so they couldn't make it across the great desert to get away. But God intervened. I said, God intervened. Try it again. But God intervened. There's some things that you're not strong enough to get out of, but God will intervene. Exodus chapter 12, verse 36. Here's what God said. Plunder the Egyptians. That God will cause people in high positions to look favorably towards you for no reason. Excuse me. I'm just going to bless myself. I've had people come to me from nowhere and say, God told me 
to give the church this large sum of money. I want to tell you what I said. Yes, he did. Come on, we'll try it again. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did he tell you? Listen closely. He put another zero behind it. From everywhere. Thousands of dollars have come in. How does that happen? I've asked God to anoint me so there'd be favor to plunder the Egyptians. Just hear it. And God will speak to people on your behalf. And if you don't believe it, then you just live your whole life in your own talent, in your own determination. How many like some help from God? God will speak to people. And it says he put a spirit on the people of God. And it says this, a favorable disposition towards the people of God and they gave to him. But here's what they did. I'm going to have you do something. You're going to be very uncomfortable. You guys, you have needs. Hello. How many of you are tired of saying it's not your car, you're borrowing it? <laughs> How many are tired of having a jumper cable ministry with your car? It's okay to have things in life. It's not a bad thing. Pastor Kamara's wife went through a hard time. Best doctors, best food, whatever it takes when we get through this, buy her a new dress. Now that wasn't the Lord, that was a smart pastor with a happy marriage. I said, how's she doing? She said, oh, praise God, she lived the prayer meeting. She's 85% there. I said, you have money still for the dress, don't you? He said, I set it aside. Hello? God, I declare, now here's what it says in the Word. It's very, very deep. It says this. It says, and they specifically asked, and God spoke to the people, and they gave it. On Sunday, we asked for you to pay for the Arctic for all the equipment. We didn't want you to guess. We said, here's what we're going to do. Did you know thousands of dollars came in? Not 10, not 20. Come on, somebody yell at me. Hallelujah. That's favorable. Favorable. God put it on people's hearts. Wonderful people gave. Everything is paid for. I think they wrote a check. Did you write a check for 20,000? Is that what you did? Who would believe the day that, that King Edward... Did you, how many saw the street named after him? Some of you don't know that. Holly, King Edward, he, did, he just writing big, fat checks for the mission field. I, I thought in the last two months, did we get 57,000 emissions? Woohoo! Thank you, Jesus. Is, is that what I saw? Did you send me it was 57,000? Oh, I'm going to ask again. I believe God for more. 57,000 dollars was given to the mission field. But we asked. What do we do? We ask, hey, we want to give to missions. We want to do this. We want to do that. Do what God tells you to do. And God put on people what? Favorable disposition. And I want some of you to stop squirming. Let's say you gave $10. That's great. That is great. You know, God didn't look at you any different than the person that gives 10,000, don't want to give 10. You give from your heart with sincerity when it comes to missions. That's what you do, all right? All of us did do it together. We wouldn't have 57 if we didn't have people give 10. Because 10 times 1,000 is money, honey. So here's what we're going to pray. you got to ask for specific things. How many need some things for your business? Let me see your hands. Hallelujah. Can I have a little fun with you? How many are due for new toupee? You've had it 30 years. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. A woman just lifted her hand. Put it down. Put it down, girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. I want you to stand to your feet tonight in faith all through the house of God. Hallelujah. How many need, how many need a commission deal to go through? Let me see your hands right now. Ask God for it. Ask God for it. There's nothing wrong with that. You got families and things to take care of. Quit, quit this. Quit this crazy martyrism. God is not asking you to be a martyr. If I felt like you should be a martyr, I'd raise money to send you to Iraq and open up a new church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hear it. Hear it. Hallelujah. God will speak to bosses. 
God will speak. Edward found, I don't know what Edward does. He just digs for things. He's in there digging, looking, microphone magnifying glass and looking through drawers. He found $53,000 we didn't know he had. $53,000. Found $53,000 that was just kind of lost. It wasn't, the money wasn't lost, but it was an annuity. We got a few dollars a year from it. And he said, hey, do we own the stock? He found out they owned the stock. Him and uncle got together. All the trustees got together and we said, sell it, baby. We'll try that again. Sell it, baby. Come on. Here's what all the trustees said. Show me the money, honey. Hallelujah. We just rejoiced over that. I'm telling you, God has things for you. I'm telling you, God has deals for you. I'm telling you, God has opportunities for you. But you got to get that anointing on you. When you tithe, listen to me. When you tithe, God will start to put favorable dispositions on people on your behalf. Right now, I'm at a hundred million dollars in my ministry that God has anointed me to raise over the last 40 years. A hundred million dollars. And I've asked God, God put a oil and anointing on me that every time I come to the pulpit, people are blessed in the name of Jesus. People are helped in the name of Jesus. And especially, I'm a fighter for the single moms. I want every single mom to know the Lord is with you. You're not alone. And I'm believing God to give you double for all your trouble. Hallelujah. I believe it with all my heart. Hallelujah. Let's hold our tithe up tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just love you. We thank you for the opportunity to give to you, to give to your kingdom, to give to your house. And Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, there would be a favorable disposition put on people on the behalf of your saints. They have specific needs right here. Everybody here has some kind of need. Let them be met in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's give to the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. appreciate Pastor Jody Ann's heart. I do. There was a little bird and she named it Willie. It's a seagull. And it had fuzz all over it and it looked like it couldn't fly. So she thought she'd feed it and help it put it back to health. And so the stupid, I mean the bird would scream and yell outside our door if the meal wasn't cooked on time three times a day. I go, this is stupid. And this seagull, that doesn't even look like a seagull, it looks like a fluff ball. Braden came to me because he was a farm boy. He said, I can take care of that seagull real quick. <laughs> and then she got a pool because it was hot up on the roof. And it's in there flopping and happy. And, and then it decides it's lunch and just starts yelling at us. And then she said, hon, hon, come here. I said, what, love? She said, look, the sister just showed up. I go, what? So we got Willie, we got Dilly, and today, guess what happened? A baby showed up. Now we have Silly. So Pastor Shot is a seagull caretaker. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. She's giggling. She's laughing. I'm going, Braden. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Help me right now. Braden, I need you, killer. I need you right now. Hallelujah. I need you. Take a moment. Just stand with me. Tonight is a, a great night to be in the house of the Lord. Ecclesiastics 3 and verse 1. Everything. Listen to me. Everything has a time. Listen to me. Everything has a season. Everything under the sun, God declares in his word, has a time and a season. 
Did you know that we are halfway through the summer already? Do you know all your murmuring, complaining, and griping about how hot your house is will be gone in 90 days? And you'll freeze like all the rest of the fools across Canada. Come on, everybody, help me right now. All of us will be shaking and freezing all together and getting in our cars and having ice on it and being mad. And then we'll be mad all winter and then the rains will come. And then our feet will be wet. I need somebody to yell at me right now. We'll be complaining about that and complaining about that. And then after that, then the sun will be back and we'll go back to a new complaint. Everything has a season, listen to me, and the time and season you're in, listen closely, it's going to leave you. It's gonna leave you. This is not your place in life. There's wholesome desires in every person here, and it hasn't happened yet, but it will. You're just in a time and a season, but I wanna let you know it's on its way. It's on its way. Jody Ann, she was a woman when she was 13. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I would say that she was in many ways more mature than her parents at 13 years. She was a woman at 13. And she saw all the dopey guys in church. I need somebody to yell me down right now. And, and she said, I, I don't have any interest in little scripture memory guys that don't have any brains and they don't believe what they're memorizing. And she began to cry out to God, bring me a man. <laughs> and she was a child. I'm not being funny. And I was a full grown man working in Nordstrom's, going to the university, bringing my broken mom to church, to the house of God. She was 15 years old, and the Lord whispered to her, that's the man you're going to marry. And I was 19 and 20. How many know I'm not going to the nursery to find my wife? I am not going to go to the nursery to find my wife. I didn't even see her because it wasn't the time or the season because I wasn't mature enough. I wasn't upright enough. I wasn't moral enough. Somebody looked this way. I didn't have my stuff together. I love God and I'm moving that direction, but it would have been a nightmare if we would have got together then. And on her 17th birthday, I didn't even know she hardly existed. Her mother came to me and said, we're having a surprise birthday party. Could you come over to our house? I'd never been to their house before. And we were upstairs in a large group of us and she came in and we surprised her. And right then I looked at what was a child who became a beautiful woman. I just didn't see it because it was the time and season. And when I saw her come to the room, I fell in love with her. She'd already been in love with me. Help me somebody say, you say it with me, we completely understand that pastor. Come on somebody, hallelujah, hallelujah. But Jody Ann and I got into the time and season. We're in it. Then her father said, I can marry at this certain time. And great man, a wonderful man. He lost his job. He was humiliated. And he came to me. He said, Vince, I, I just don't have the money for the wedding. Can we postpone it a year? And I knew we were moral, we was upright. At least I was in my heart. I cannot, she has to answer to God, but I was moral and upright in my heart. Come on, guys, help me out. I need some guys to help me out. I don't know what crazy things in her head, her little homeschool head. I just know I was upright. And we looked, oh yeah, I, I'm, I'm really afraid of you, babe. I just want to let you know, I just tremble. That you're, 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 <laughs> I do sleep, I do sleep hard. Hallelujah, and you do all the cooking. Um, but, I knew that we were in the danger zone. See, we don't need a pulpit that pretends and says fake things. I knew if we waited another year, I'm serious, we, we were in the danger zone, we hadn't been immoral. But I knew we needed to get married. I knew it. And I went to her dad by faith and I said, don't worry about a thing, I'll pay for everything. He said, well, you don't have to do that. And I said, oh yeah, I do, yeah, I do. I remember handing him $1,000. 
I remember God began to bless me. And I, in my heart of hearts, we had the most wonderful wedding. In my heart of hearts, I knew that we were in the time and season because God intervened. Listen to me. You give your whole being to God, he'll cause you. Do you know the God we serve can make the sun stop? And God can put you t tonight in the right time and right season. How many know for a fact there's been times in your life you're not in the right time and you're not in the right season? Let me see your hands. You know that for a fact. That is so difficult. It's so hard. There's so much guilt and so much shame. So tonight, I just want to bring this. Can I bring a word tonight? Could, could someone help me? And if you, if, you, if you speak various language in your native tongue, if you could just yell at me, it doesn't matter. If you're from the Philippines, there's many languages. The, wherever you're from, if you're from Iran, wherever you're from, if you know the language, I want you to just yell at me in your native tongue. Just yell at me, Cantonese, whatever it is. If you're from the hood, just say, yo, bro. I don't care where you're from, all right? Hallelujah. If you're black, brother, and you know Ebonics, <laughs> doesn't matter what, what your deal is. But I want you to yell at me, go ahead, white boy. Bring it, white boy. No, no, no. Somebody in this place yell at me right now. Just say, go ahead, white boy. Hallelujah. Huh? I don't want to get out of God's timing. I don't want to get out of God's will. I don't want to miss the Lord. How many have missed the Lord enough times and you don't want to miss the Lord again? Hallelujah. Is it okay tonight if you just lean over and I just give you a kick from the Holy Ghost to get you back on track? Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, worship team. Everything has a time and season. You cannot afford to miss your God appointment. I was a commercial fisherman in Alaska. You took a plane from Seattle to Anchorage. From Anchorage, you got another plane and went to a plane called Knack Knack. Some would say Knack Knack. Then you got on a bush plane when the tide was out and you landed on the beach in a place called Iggy Gig. Iggy gig. We had to be there for 90 days. It's the most miserable place that I've ever been before. It's in the middle of the summer and there are literally millions and millions of mosquitoes. Millions. They were so bad that the bears cried because they're biting their nose. You had to be wrapped in rubber, everything, because the mosquitoes are everywhere. And you had to go there for 90 days. Now we made thousands of dollars. However, of the 90 days, the fishing game only allowed us to fish five of them. Huh? Only five of the days. So you have to be on call and listen to their command. If you miss one day, you'll miss all that money. Now, in 1976, I want to let you know, to make a $25,000 in a day, someone say, come on. It was real money. I'm engaged, and how many know I need real money? And these guys would get tired of waiting, and they'd all get drunk. And when it was time to fish, they couldn't fish. They couldn't get up. We had to be extremely alert and sober because you only got five days out of 90. I believe a lot of Christians fall asleep. I believe a lot of us have missed what God has for us because we're tired, we're exhausted, we're hurt, we're angry. 2017, we had in Canada one of the greatest four, 100 Yard dash relay, relay teams, phenomenal. These guys were phenomenal. Canada had never had this kind of team before. Three years before that, in the Olympics, they took third place of bronze. That's, is, these guys are moving. And they said they're either going to get a gold or a silver, but in the world qualification, one of the guys dropped the baton. And they were disqualified. And they didn't even get to go to the Olympics. I'm telling you, God's going to hand you something, but you better make sure you get it. You better make sure that your hand, your eyes, your heart, your spirit is ready to receive it. Because if you drop it, how many know that the Olympics now are not for another five years to qualify? I believe a lot of us have dropped it. Someone say, go ahead, white boy. No, no, come on, somebody, help me out. Go ahead, hallelujah. 
How many of you know there's been times in your life you dropped the baton when God's handing you something? God's giving, and then all of a sudden God's blessed you. He's, he's prospering you. He's setting you up, and you got full of yourself. You got full of pride. Pink became rebellious. I want to let you know what I do, do when Pastor shot. When God blesses me, you know what I get? Lower. <laughs> Try it again. Hallelujah. Lower. Because this might not come around for a while. And I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. Every time God blesses me, I get lower. I become more humble. I, I look in my heart any kind of attitude, any kind of anything, any kind of stinking thinking. Someone say stinking thinking. Time, seasons, happen to everybody. Can I give you in life some seasons? How many want to hear some seasons tonight? Really? We'll try it again. How many want to hear some seasons? Because a lot of you think you're out of your season, but you're perfectly in your season. You just don't really like your season. It's not a bad season. It's the season you're in to prepare you for what God has for you. Let me tell you one of the seasons of life. It's called a dry season. God's quiet. God is quiet. You can't hear him. He's not speaking to you. Let me help you out. What God said to you in the light, remember in the dark. When you're in a season of blessing and open heaven, when you go in the dry season, remember what God said to you in the light. So now you're in the cave. Some of you believe what God said over this house in a good season. Then we had a long bad season, but because you held on to that word, now we're in a real good season, hallelujah. It's called a dry season. Here's your answer to your dry season. It's found in Psalms 119, verse 11. Psalms 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So if you're in a dry season, you won't make it through it if you don't have the word of God in you. We'll try that again. If you're in a dry season, a season that's really dry, if you don't have the word of life inside of you, you won't make it. You have to have it in you. Some of you right now, you, God has given you a word from the Bible. I'm telling you right now, claim it even though it's dark. Claim it even though it's dry. Claim it even though it's long. Claim it. God says to me that I will cause all things to work for good because I love you and I want to do your purposes. So it doesn't matter what season I'm in. If I'm in a dry season, God's not speaking to me. What I do is I speak the word of God back to God. Number two, a waiting season. Huh. How many are not good at waiting? Let me see your hands right now. You're not good at waiting. How many at the grocery store when there's the express lane that you will count how many goods those people have? Because you don't like to wait. And some of you, they have a thing of bananas and you count every bananas if that's. Now Starbucks is good and they're quick, but today we have the slow crew. How many know what the slow crew is? And we went in, into Starbucks and we got all of our stuff, but that which really mattered, my food. Got the drinks, Jody Ann got her little whatever she got. And I'm standing there. And all these people who called in, they're not there, I'm here. Now I did not sin, but I considered it, but I thought I could preach tonight. And it was, it was eternity. I mean, it was eternity. It was forever. I remember walking up there and she said, oh, I'm so sorry, Pastor. I, I, oh, oh, good to see you, Pastor. How are you? Shalom me luck on. Oh, shalom you. I'll shalom you in the head. And then she left. And another one came. Are you waiting for something? Kind of. Waiting for your life to come to an end. That's what I'm waiting for here. I mean, it was forever. I felt like they quoted the scripture. Our God, 1,000 days or 1,000 years is like one day. I just I felt that was a scripture. That, 
It was just, oh, it was just forever waiting. Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. The waiting season, Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who wait on me will what? Renew their strength in the waiting season. The key to your waiting season is to keep your strength up. Well, how can I do that? Be in the house of God. How can I do that? Worship crazy. Come on, everybody. Worship God crazy. Hallelujah. Just stay right with God, and it won't be as long if you have strength. But a lot of you have lost strength. I, I prayed, and God's not answering, and I thought he'd do this by now, and I thought this, and I thought that. Well, you thought wrong. Because this season is irrevocable. It happens to everybody. Let me give parents, young collegians, another season, starting your career and your businesses. It's called the busy season. I don't have enough time. <laughs> it's the busy season. When you have five kids, you're busy. Let me tell you next week what I have. I'm gonna preach three times very well. We'll try that again. I'm gonna preach three times very well. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna leave early in the morning and I'm gonna drive 400 miles and do a prophetic conference tomorrow, okay? So I'm gonna do the conference. I'm gonna preach Sunday. I, I, I'm gonna preach, listen to me, 10 television programs next week. And I'm going to do five to eight national commercials next week, and I'm gonna preach on Wednesday night, really good, somebody shout me down, hallelujah. I'm gonna preach next Sunday, and then we have a men's event. I am not too busy. My busyness not, does not consume me. What consumes me is pleasing God. What I do is not who I am. This is what I have to do next week, and every program will be anointed. Every commercial will have a yes yeah, yeah, on it. Come on, everybody. A a Wednesday night, I'll, I'll never preach better. Huh? Sunday, I'll never preach better. Someone said, go ahead, white boy. Come on, somebody. Help me out. And what happens is you let the busyness determine who you are. And you know, I can do 10 programs next week without God. What are you talking about? I can just go through the motions and do, or every one of them is going to be anointed and touch a heart across this nation. Busyness, it's a busy season. Having kids, we had five kids, I'll never forget it, where we have night service, morning we had two services and we're going every which way and we just kind of left, we want to get the kids to lay down and have a little bite to eat before the night service and we left our baby at church. We were busy. We looked in the car and we said, where's Austin? She said, I thought you had him. I said, I never wanted him. Here, here, here we are, we just baby. we just left the baby. He wasn't a baby, he was not three years old. And we rushed back to the church. He didn't even know we were gone or care. Did he care? I don't have enough time. Ephesians 5, 16, you ready? Do not let your business, busyness determine your love for God. Here's what he says, I will redeem the time of your life. We had more fun with five kids. I would travel 50 to 75 times a year all over the world, and you know what we did? We redeemed the time. I took one of the kids with me. I took one of them with me. We capitalized on every moment because, say it with me, I'm gonna redeem the time. Come on, everybody, I'm gonna redeem the time. Come on, everybody, I'm gonna redeem the time. Hallelujah, my wife will know I love her. I am not too busy. I'm in a busy season, but I believe God redeems time. How many want to believe that tonight? God will redeem your time. Man, this is good, isn't it? Yes, it is. How good, really good. Hallelujah. Let me give you another seasons. Tests and trial seasons. Does anybody feel like you're in medieval times and you've been put on a torture stretcher? It's just like, it's just so emotionally hard. It's just like, what did I do? How come this is happening to me? 
I thought if I tithed and went to church, nothing bad would happen to me. What's wrong with you? You crazy in your head? Trials come to everybody. A trial didn't come your way and say, oh, you can't handle it. We're going to go easy on you. The demons don't come together and say, you know, I don't think they can take anymore. They're going to lose their mind. We need to back up. It didn't work that way. We had a, a prophetic word. We'll live in a perpetual honeymoon. I want to let you know there's some times it, 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 there was not a moon and there wasn't any honey. But we carried in our heart perpetual honeymoon. Glory to God. Are we having the time of our life? Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful? How can it be wonderful? It's just wonderful. Because I'm not going to let the trials and the tests. Let me tell you about a, a trial and a test. It tells you who you really are. And how many don't really like who you are sometimes? When preacher comes, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in this. Uh, the pastor's just this. The, and this and that and that. How many have done that before? How many have thought it? How many have thought that? I'm not going, I'm not this. How many have thought it before? All right, we'll try one thing. How many are dirty, filthy liars? You just, there we go. We've all thought that. I don't need to take this. I don't need this. I don't need these people complaining to me. I don't need, yeah, maybe I do. Maybe I'm not as holy as I think I am. Maybe I'm not. The whole time, no one said, preach it, white boy. And right at the wrong time, someone said, I'm not as holy as I think I am. Preach it, white boy, that's not true about you. Yeah, you're nothing. Oh, it's so good to be here. Test and trial season. Galatians 6, 9. Don't become weary in doing good. At the proper time, you will reap a great harvest. Don't get weary. Don't get weary. Because God promises in your trial, you're going to have a great harvest. Hallelujah. How many want me to give you another season? Spiritual warfare season. This is a time that this is beyond having some hard days. This is beyond, and, and some of you jump to that all the time. Don't jump to it all the time, but there'll be time absolutely unleashing a demonic forces against you. It is unruly, crazy, demonic that says, I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna destroy you, and then it says this, and you're not even born again, you're going to hell really hard. It's like every force is against you. I've had some of those seasons. Whew. I, I, I've had some seasons where the enemy has whispered so loud that I had troubles as a pastor distinguishing if that was God or the devil. That my head has spun. I've had, how many here have ever had spiritual equilibrium vertigo? You're just like, oh God, what, what's going on? What's next? And you even want to say, if you just leave me alone, I won't praise him anymore. If you just let up on me a little bit, I want to let you know if you're under attack, that means there's a mighty call of God on your life. Hallelujah. The enemy doesn't attack nobody. He's attacking somebody that God has put something in you. I'm going to just tell you what Pastor Shot does. When there's real attack on me, I go, oh, thank you, enemy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sila to you. You just remind me I'm going to praise God all the more. And I retaliate with my praise. I retaliate with my German dance. I, I, I retaliate with my, my shake and my shout and my praise. I, I pray in tongues more. Hallelujah. I, oh, you just reminded me. I didn't praise God enough. I'm going to praise God. Are you hearing this? I said, are you hearing this? Are you guys hearing this right now? You know, oh, woe is me. I think I need medication. I, I think I need counsel. I think I need deliverance. Help me, somebody. I think this, and I'm the only one. Boo-hoo for me. Don't do it. 
Why don't you take 15 seconds and stand up. You've been under a little bit. Stand up and say, you are God. Hallelujah. I will praise you at all times. Your praises shall be in my mouth in the good times and the bad times, in health and sickness. Hallelujah. You are my God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for reminding me I need to praise the Lord more. Hallelujah. I need to shout more. I need to dance more. Hallelujah. I need to celebrate more. Go ahead and be seated. You guys are crazy. Be seated. Spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6, 12. The fight is not against flesh and blood. Now, this is a little embarrassing. My grandma would have a devil spirit come on her. There is no ifs, ands about it. She all but had her head turned around eight times. My grandma, there was spirit would come on her, and she would call us. We're young and say the most demonic things beyond. She called my little beautiful, tender hearted wife and said, Jody Ann, I wanted to tell you something about Vincer. That was my name to her, Vincer. She said, he said, you know, he's had many, many, many girlfriends. And I, I just don't know if he really loves you. I'm not sure. There were some really, really wonderful girls. And, and I just think that. He was in a moment and he was weak. Really? Yeah, Grandma, can you come on over and have dinner together? I mean, she just full on demon. Now, my grandma was married seven times. And she blew up my mom and dad's marriage. My grandma did it. And she had a demonic spirit to bring divisions between men and women. So I, 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 I threw my arms around my little wife because she'd never seen something like this. She didn't know what she married. She just saw the V and the good looks. She just saw me working at Nordstrom's and smelling really fine. She just saw the nice car. She just saw the college graduate who's going somewhere in life. She didn't see my grandma. She didn't see. We had a gathering once, and my grandma just was demonized. It was a demon. We were in some of the greatest Holy Ghost movements. And no one saw me do this. She just started to manifest. I said, in Jesus' name, be quiet. And no one saw it because everybody was talking. And she just stopped. I go, whoa. We had just started the church, and I was going to the church mailbox. It's Monday, so I'm not a pastor. And uh, some of you didn't catch that. I'm just spiritually, I don't want to be a pastor. You know, I, I, I'm just taking a little break and I'm going to the mailbox. And I go to the mailbox and there's this lady and she looks at me and she says, ah, Satan is going to destroy you. And I tried to get in the line to get the mail quicker and try to ignore her. And she just, ah, and then she starts yelling and pointing at me. And I said, I don't think this is normal. Do you, what do you guys think? I, 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 you know, I, you know, and she just started manifesting. She started spinning around and cussing and yelling. I went, I'm not a pastor on Monday. I'll be ready on Tuesday, but I just want to go to get the mailbox. And so I got out of there real quick. And then people started calling our house demonic people, just out of nowhere. You're going to fail. You're going to get killed. It was weird. And, uh, and then I went to the mailbox the next week. I went a half an hour later. And I, looked, I saw her. She didn't see me. So being the man of God that I am, I ducked in my car. I ducked down and I looked over the steering wheel. And she was there. And I just said, I I'm just going to try this. I'm just going to do a little spiritual warfare and and give it a whirl. So I pointed my finger, but I didn't let her see me. I pointed my finger, I said, in Jesus' name, you be silent right now. She grabbed her can and started beating all the flowers and spinning around. She fell to the ground, got up and left. I said, I can be a pastor on Monday. Come on, everybody, I'm a bad man on Monday, on Tuesday. And I realized we have a spiritual demonic war. And some of you say, well, I don't know. I believe in Jesus and I need forgiveness. But I don't know if I believe in that. And you look like you don't believe in that. Our fight, say fight, 
is not Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood. I don't want to be a spiritual kook, but I'm going to let you know there are generational curses in your family. And they want to bring you down. Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against pastor shot shall prosper. Try that again. No weapon. Enemy, you have no authority over my life. None. I plead the blood of Jesus. I release your angels over me. I thank you, God. Your oil is on my life. Come on, somebody help me out right now. There is a season of spiritual warfare. Can I give you one more? Thank you. It's called the blessed season. It's called the blessed season. Now, if you're wounded from the spiritual warfare, if you gave up because of the tests and trials, if you became too busy for the will of God in your life, if what God said has taken too long, and if you died in the dry season, you will never enjoy the blessed season. I want somebody to say, I am going to be in the blessed season. I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. I'm going to see why God put me on the earth. I am going to see it for the glory of God. You know what I love about this? You can be blessed and you don't have to be the brightest place in this person in this place. Now it's my time to say something. You're preaching it now, white boy. You can be blessed and you're not the best looking. You're preaching now, white boy. You, you, you're not the richest. You're not the smartest. You're not the educated. You're just faithful to God. And God will have a blessing for every one of his people. And there will be a season that will make up for all your other seasons called the blessing season. It'll make up. You will say, even though you were hurt, you were broke, you were betrayed, you were crushed, and when the blessed season comes, you will say to God, it was worth it, hallelujah. It was worth it, glory to God. I thank God I made it through that other season, but this season is so good that I'd go through anything for this day. One little scripture pertaining to this is found in Deuteronomy 28 verse 3, you shall be blessed in the city, you shall be blessed in the country. If you go this way, you're blessed, you go that way, you're blessed. You put your hand to this, you're blessed, you put your hand to that, you're blessed. Whatever you do, the blessing of the Lord, the favor of God will be on your life. Huh. Hallelujah. And I'm believing God to have this whole congregation, every one of you, to have a season of blessing have a season that will cause you to forget the tears, the hurt, the humiliation, and the betrayal. That your heart will be full of love and gratitude and you won't be mad at anybody and you won't be prejudiced and you won't have a mad mouth and you won't have a hard heart because you're blessed. When the blessing of God comes on you, I wanna tell you, you're afraid to be dumb. There will be a fear of God on you. You'll say to yourself, I ain't this smart for this to be this good. This isn't because of my genius brilliance. This isn't because of my determination. This is God Almighty, and I don't want to blow this deal. How many have ever had God bless you, and you don't want to blow this deal? Praise the Lord, everybody. I believe that God is extending the blessing season. In Los Angeles on January 4th, 1949, it was 27 degrees. I checked in Anchorage, Alaska on that day, it was hotter. And those people moved there, many of them because of health conditions. They had worked in factories. And their bodies were sick. So they moved from Michigan and cold states, factory workers, and they moved back then to beautiful Los Angeles, Wilshire Boulevard, all these places. 
And literally the hospital was full of panic attacks. Because the doctor said, you got to get into a climate that's warmer. And they did, or your life is going to be over. So when that cold came, they began to panic. They said to themselves, because normally it's 60 to 80 degrees, and it was 27. And if you're Canadian, you don't know what 27 is. How many want me to tell you right now what 27 is? Cold, baby. A real cold. Horrible cold. You can extend your bad season if you stay in a season that God doesn't want you in anymore. You can stay in a climate spiritually. And I'm going to share one more insight. Can I do that? I'm not going to preach it tonight, but one more insight. 1 Kings 22, it says, don't force your season. Listen to me. Don't force the season you want to be in. Don't force it. Don't say, well, God, if you don't do this, then I'm going to. Don't force it. Because there was two great leaders who wouldn't listen to God, and they had a phenomenal word from God. And God said to him, look it, don't go to war right now. Go home in peace. How many would like from the prophet of God to give you a word that says in everything in your life is going to have divine peace? Let me see your hands right now. That was the word. That was the word. But they went to false prophets. And this weekend, you can go to a hotel and there'll be a false prophet that'll take your money but won't care about your soul. They won't care about you. And they'll give you flowery words and they'll tell you this and that. We've seen it over and over again. And it's not God, but you want it to be so bad, you make it God when it's not. I'm gonna say this in love. Your blessing season is a lot closer than you think. I'll say it again. Your blessing season is way closer than you think. I want to let you know we're 120 days from winter. And we'll look at the mountain again and we'll see the snow again. We'll see the beauty again. We went up to Whistler last Thursday and there was still snow on some of the high peaks even though it was hot down below. And I want to let you know today that God is going to sprinkle his snow and his greatness and his mercy and his blessing on your life. If you tonight say, God, I'm going to respond right in my season. Stand with me tonight. Hallelujah. God, I'm going to stay right in my season. Don't force your season. Don't force your season. Praise the Lord in the season you're in. Thank God for where you're at right now. How many most of the day, how many of you have sanity? Let me see your hands right now, most of the day. Hallelujah. How many have provision most of the time? Let me see your hands right now. How many, how many of you can say God's been good to me? Put your hands up right now. How many because of the precious blood of Jesus that you're going to heaven? You don't have to worry about damnation. You're going to heaven because of the precious blood of Jesus. I said to myself this last month, I wouldn't want to be sick in Liberia. I did. I just said it to myself. The hospital is a morgue. It's the place where they embalm you and prepare you for death. And I just began to think about that. I don't want to be, wouldn't want to be sick in Liberia. And when I called the man of God, I felt that his wife was going to die. I just sensed it. I didn't know she hadn't stood up for 10 days. She couldn't open her eyes. She had no feelings in her leg. She wouldn't eat. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to use glad tidings to save her life and bless her. You see, God will come to your impossible situations and he'll bless you. He'll bless you. I remember six months ago, I rebuked Pastor Camara pretty hard. And a lot of people want me to be their pastor, but they just want me to say, oh, do, 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 do. 
We'll try that again. Oh, you, 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 boo, boo, bee, bee. Oh, you, you, you. You know, you, 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 you. Oh, my little, my, my beautiful little perfect. Oh, do, do, do. You're not perfect. Don't fool me. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. You're wonderful, but you ain't perfect. You did. I, 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 can, I can see it on you right now. You push you too much. Oh, girl, I'll take you out. You know what I'm talking about. I will mess you up permanently. I will pull out my switch bag and have you look like all my sisters and cousins. And we all got that. Come on, everybody. We all got that. It's all of us. Are, come on. I need some people to say you are rumbling in the jungle. You are crazy. Are there any crazy people here? Put your hands up right now. You're crazy. You're double crazy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. All of a sudden you're, ah, kill you. It's true. And I rebuked him. He said something with a pure heart, but he said, I really feel like I'm going to travel the world and have a ministry around the world. He said, you don't have anything to say. You think you can preach better than me? And he goes, well, no, no, pastor. You can't. And you don't have a ministry around the world. Some of you would be offended. But I'll let you know, he could have walked out of a season of his wife being saved. I said, you are a wonderful, godly man. I so admire you and respect you. But your anointing comes because you love Liberia, not because you have a word. And you will travel all over the world and they'll want to hear what God's doing in Liberia. Your word is not your word. Your word is Liberia. And as long as you love Liberia, God will send you all over the world. You, we need to hear the word of the Lord in you by the place that you love and you've been faithful to. And God's going to raise you up and promote you. You're going to prophesy to kings. Come on, somebody. And pastors from all over Africa will look to you for help to be a father. But you are not going to travel the world and have a word you're going to travel because you love the place you're at and God's going to use you mightily and he could have been mad at me who's this guy to tell me someone say go ahead white boy he could have been all offended he said you're right thank you pastor I'm going to ask you right now God's going to take you out of the season that you can't handle much longer but you got to get your spirit right <laughs> you got is there anybody here have a little crazy thinking. Come on, somebody. Anybody here think a little too highly of yourself sometimes? Anybody here stubborn? Is anybody here, you're not only German, but you're mule. Let me see your hands right now. Is anybody here? Hallelujah. And God would say to us, Lord, I'm your servant. Cleanse me with your precious blood. Put your hands in the air with me right now. We surrender to you. Change anything you want me to change. Do anything in my life you want to do. Use me anyway. God, I thank you for the season I'm in right now, God. I thank you for the seasons of my life that I didn't think I was going to make it. Oh, but you were so good. God, you were so good. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. I can hear it right now. I love you. I love you. Oh, yes, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, sing. I love you. I love you. I love you. Sing it with me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Sing it. Whatever season you're in right now, step out and come to the altar and lift your hands to God. Just come out right now and just say, come to the altar right now, all through this place, and just say, I love you, God. I love you, God. It's the thing that will keep you alive whatever season you're in. Just come and tell him, I love you, Jesus. Come on, team. Push in. Come on. Here we go. Just tell God whatever season you're in. Hallelujah.
not going to miss your appointment. Sing it once more. Just sing it to the Lord. I love you. times and the bad times. Jesus, you're my Lord all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight, Jesus. We thank you. Thank you for the times. Thank you for the seasons. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight. We just bless you tonight, Jesus. Just from your heart, just tell him, I love you, Jesus. I just love you. I want to please you. I want to honor you with my life. I just thank you with all of my heart, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' beautiful name. Hallelujah. Always, I want to always be transparent. I never want to preach down to anyone. I always want to preach up. I always want to preach up. I had a little season where I just said to God, my life is a waste. What you told me you were going to do, it didn't happen. And the Lord's mercy reached down to me and said, just watch and see. <laughs> I heard God, just watch and see. And you'll never be able to say you did it. And I want to let you know I'm seeing it right here at Glad Tidings. I'm seeing some of the most broken, hurt, betrayed people I've ever met in my life who are the most beautiful, full of faith, lovely people. This is a tremendous place. And if you don't think it is, I want to remind you we're sinners here. And we're good at it. <laughs> Try that again. We are sinners here. And we're good at it. How many have a master's degree in sin? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, come on, everybody. We're, we're good. This is a wonderful place. It's a great place. Hallelujah. God's moving in an incredible way in this place. If I could just take a moment and just, just hear this bother you. You know, I know you were a baby and you were one month old and they sprinkled on your head. I understand that. You got dropped in your head too, but we won't talk about that. Okay. Water baptism is absolutely essential. Now, it doesn't save you. The blood of Jesus does. But water baptism is you saying to the world, Jesus is my Lord. It's your confession of faith. And I don't want to make you guilty, but the Bible says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before the Father. And I don't want to find out what that means. How many don't want to find out what that means? I don't want to know. That, 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 that scripture doesn't pertain to me, you know. But water baptism is very important. And if you're baptized because you were in a liturgical church and that's what they did, no, it says believe, then be baptized. Believe and be baptized. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to do water baptism. I would do it. I, just, I would just be, I'd be baptized. I wouldn't even pray about it. I wouldn't think about it. Uh, I would recommend, they're going to do a little class on Sunday after service, just give you the information. And then I want to make this announcement. When you're baptized, because many of you will be, wear dark clothes. I want to say, some of you didn't get that, you know. Please wear dark clothes. Number one, we don't want you to come out of there and you become the tempter. And number two, we don't want people to guide, 
gouge your eyes out because you come out of that pool. So there's two ways to look at it, all right? But I'm gonna just tell you, there's ushers, where, where are those clipboards? Where's the clipboards, somebody? Sign up if you haven't been baptized, do it. We're gonna do it on the 21st. It's gonna be a major celebration. But if you have not been baptized, I, I'm sorry to be this strong, be baptized, be baptized. Second thing, God has put together a, a Bible school for the fall. It won't happen until the first week of October. And I really felt led, a great pastor who's pastored for 50 years is gonna come and be the dean and we'll be able to give certificates of completion for classes. And it's gonna be really a whole nother level. Our Bible school's been good, but we're just gonna go way up. Cause I'm gonna say way up. And the first, the first four weeks, it'll be in October, uh, we're gonna do, and some of you, don't, you won't understand this right now, but it's called Davidic worship. Where did we get worship in the Bible? How did the tabernacle of David take place? It's gonna be for real. Hallelujah. So, and there will be some homework. You can audit it. And I just have really prayed about it. We are not gonna charge anybody. I don't have peace about it. I just don't have peace about charging people. I just feel like we just need to do that. I'm not saying I'm smart, but I do have a master's degree in Bible and I didn't get it through the mail. All right. And the other gentleman has a doctorate and that doesn't mean anything. There's some dumb doctors. How many know that for a fact? Some dumb, dumb, dumb. But there is an academia and biblical knowledge. It's going to be over the top. So I want to tell you in advance, it'll start. We'll do it the first week in October, Monday night. Then we'll have Canadian Thanksgiving. And then we'll do three weeks after that. So that's going to be our first semester. And I'm going to have him come and preach on Wednesday night, I think the tw August 31st. And then afterwards, we're going to have a gathering with him. He's going to talk about the school. It's going to be really, 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 say it's going to be really big. Come on, somebody say it right. It's going to be really big. So we're really excited about it. Um, I'm anticipating online about 500 students. Um, but I would prefer, especially those who are getting a certificate, you're in person. There's nothing like interacting with a professor. Okay, so it's going to be really good. So those are the things. Water baptism, somebody say water baptism. Well, pastor, I, I, they, my cousin. No, no, be baptized in water. My, my cousin. Uh, spit on me. No, 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 no. Be baptized, be immersed in water. All right. We can, we can have a little fun with you. Right. But I, I, I walk by in a sprinkler. No, 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 no. Be baptized because it's what? It's your testimony to everybody who Jesus is. All right. Planted in the house of the Lord, you'll flourish in the courts of our God. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord.